Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We got another game for y'all featuring some of the all new commanders from Baldur's Gate. So let's see what we got this time. First up is Matt on Miram, Sentinel Worm. This teamer deck is focused around Dragon Tribal, using Miram to develop all Matt's powerful dragons to take over the game. He starts the game with a mountain, an island, Scalding Tarn, Arcane Signet, Farseek, Garrick's Uprising, and Intet the Dreamer. Next up is Cameron on Nine Fingers Keen. This Sulta deck is focused all around the gate land type, hoping to flood the board with a ton of gates and use them in cool and powerful ways to win the game. His starting hand has Odawara, Soaring City, Fabled Passage, Heap Gate, Cyclonic Rift, Toxic Deluge, Coiling Oracle, and Scoot Swarm. Our third player today is Chandler on Raphael, Fiendish Savior. This Rakdos deck is a multi-tribal deck, a little bit of devils, a little bit of demons, with a tiny dash of tiefling on top, hoping to take over the game with an army of these terrifying creatures. He starts the game with the Temple of Malice, Luxury Suite, Phyrexian Altar, Infernal Grasp, Jessica's Will, Gibbering Fiend, and Torian Mauler. Last is Logan on Minsk and Boo, Timeless Hero. This Gruel deck plans to make some powerful creatures to hard bonk opponents, then fling them at opponents' faces using its commander's down tech ability to draw a bunch of cards. He keeps a hand with a Forest, Rootbound Crag, Soul Ring, Secure Tribe Elder, Uvenwald Oddity, Colonian Hydra, and Thunderfoot Bailoth. We're about to hop right into the game, but before that, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. We post new gameplay videos every week and episodes of our podcast every other week, so you won't want to miss it. Links to the deck list, our social media, and our public Discord server are in the description. Our channel is also partnered with Dragon Shield, so if you're looking to pick up any new sleeves or magic related products, check out our affiliate link in the description. We've also started a Patreon. We want to expand our content in new ways, so if you want to help support us financially, please check out the link in the description. Now, on to the gameplay. Let's get into it, but real quick before we do, if you entered the Tiamat giveaway, stick around till the end. There will be more information for you there. Logan wins the die roll and he'll start off with a basic forest into a soul ring. He'll pass the turn to Matt, who will play a Scalding Tarn and immediately fetch for his Triumph and pass while searching. Cameron will play some at Guildgate and pass to Chandler, who will play his Temple of Malice tapped, scrying one to the bottom, and then the turn will be back to Logan, who plays his Rootbound Crag, then taps for four to cast Minxkin Boo, Timeless Heroes. On turn two, when it enters, he gets a boo token, and then he'll uptick Minx to put three counters on that Hamster. Logan will then roll to see who he attacks, and the dice pick Cameron, so Cameron will take four damage. And then the turn is passed to Matt, who will play a mountainous land for a turn, then taps for two to cast his Farseek. He declares he's going to find a Taiga, and passes to Cameron while he's searching. Cameron will play his Otawara as land for turn, then taps for two to cast his Coiling Oracle. The top card of his library is Attempt with Discovery, which will go to his hand. Chandler is excited because he kept a two lane hand, and then Cameron will pass the turn. Now on Chandler's turn, he'll play his Luxury Suite as land for turn, then task for two to cast his Gibbering Fiend. And when it enters the battlefield, all his opponents will take a damage. And then the turn is passed to Logan, who immediately moves to combat and swings for four at Matt, who just has to take it. After this, Logan will downtick Minx to sacrifice Boo, dealing four damage to Chandler's face and drawing four cards. He'll then play a Command Tower as land for turn, then drops a Finhorn Elves and a Sakura Tribe Elder. The turn will then just be passed. And Matt will start his turn off with a Mana Confluence, and then will tap for 2 to cast an Arcane Signet, losing 1 to his Mana Confluence. He'll then tap for 3 more and cast Garrick's Uprising, then pass the turn to Cameron. And Cameron will start off with a Golgari Guildgate, and then tap for 2 to cast Trionic Resonator. After this he'll move to combat and swing 1 at Logan's Walker, and he'll just take it. The turn will then be passed to Chandler, who plays a Command Tower as land for turn. He'll then tap for 3 to cast his Torian Mahler, and then will move to combat and swing his Gibbering Fiend at Minx. Logan will do Ye old Sakura Tribe Elder combat trick, finding a mountain, and then Chan passes the turn. On his upkeep, Logan will get a brand new Boo. Now in his main phase, he'll play a mountainous land for turn, and then he'll cast a Hammer of Perforos, and he'll have one mana left over. Mauler trigger, he'll then tap for four more to cast Colonian Hydra, which enters with four plus one plus one counters. Another Mauler trigger. Logan will then plus Minx, give Boo three counters, and then Logan will move to combat. Swinging Colonian Hydra at Cameron, and Boo at Chandler. And when the Hydra attacks, it'll double all counters on his creatures. There are no blocks, so Cameron will take 8 damage, and Chandler will take 7. And after that pretty scary turn, Logan will pass. Now on Matt's turn, he decides to just start by tapping for 5 to cast Miram the Sentinel Worm. And when he does, he'll draw a card off the Uprising. He also forgets to lose a life to his Mana Confluence. Mauler trigger, and unfortunately he will miss a land drop, so he just passes the turn to Cameron who will start by playing his Heap Gate and then tapping for 4 to cast Tempt with Discovery. Mauler Trigger. 
After a lot of discussion at the table, Chandler is the only one to give in to the tempt. And so Chandler will search for a castle locked going to the battlefield, and Cameron will get a Demir Guildgate and Baldur's Gate. He'll then move to combat and swings for one at Minsk. He'll then pass the turn to Chandler, praying that he has some feasible way to deal with Logan's board. And now in his turn, Chandler will play a mountain his land for turn. He'll then tap for 3 to cast Phyrexian Altar, then moves to combat, swinging 2 at Minx to kill him. And then just passes the turn. The turn is now Logan's and he starts off with a basic forest. He'll then recast Minx and Boo, Timeless Heroes, and for some reason accidentally pays 8 mana for it. But regardless, he'll uptick the Planeswalker to put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on his Finhorn Elves. Also Mauler Trigger. Logan will then move to combat and attempt to move to attackers, but Chandler stops him at the beginning of combat to Infernal Grass Colonian Hydra. And let's just say Matt and Cameron could not be happier, because that board could potentially kill someone. Logan still has some decent attacks on this board though, and he'll send his boo at Matt and his Finhorn Elves at Cameron. After damage goes through, Logan will just pass the turn. It is now Matt's turn, and he immediately drops Intet the Dreamer. Mauler Trigger. When Intet enters, he'll get to make a token copy of it thanks to Mirim, and then draw two cards off Garrick's Uprising. And thankfully for Matt, that token is non-legendary. After this, he'll play a mountainous land for turn, then moves to combat, swinging Mirim at Minsk and Boo. And then the turn is passed to Cameron, who starts off by playing a Black Dragon Gate tapped as land for turn, naming green when it enters. He'll then just pass the turn to Chandler, very much telegraphing his Cyclonic Rift. Chandler will start his turn off by tapping for 5 and casting his commander, Raphael. After this, he'll move to combat and swings his 9-9 Torian Mahler at Logan and his 3-2 Gibbering Fiend at Cameron. Logan takes the damage, and Cameron puts his oracle under the bus, and Chandler gains 12 life. After combat, he sacrifices his fiend to make a 1 black mana, and then casts Viscera Seer. Then on his end step, he gets to make a 1-1 one, one devil, and the turn is passed to Logan. Logan then thinks for a bit, and then makes a pretty big brain play. He drops a chain reaction. This will trigger Torian Mahler, and Chandler will respond. He starts by sacrificing his devil token, dealing 1 damage to Logan, gaining a life since it did have lifelink, and scrying 1 to the bottom. He'll then sacrifice Raphael, scrying another one to the bottom, and then finally sacrifices Viserys here, scrying one to the top. And this is exactly what Logan was hoping for. There are only six creatures on the battlefield now, which means Chandler's Mauler and Logan's Boo don't die, but it does kill all of Matt's dragons. Logan will then move to combat and swing for seven at Chandler. And after this, he'll pass the turn to Matt. And Matt will start off by casting a Nature's Lore, Mauler Trigger, and Matt finds a Tropical Island to the battlefield. He'll then cast a regrowth on Nature's Lore, and recast the Nature's Lore, losing one to his confluence. He just finds a forest this time, and then passes the turn to Cameron, who immediately taps for three and casts Scoot Swarm. Chandler misses his Mauler trigger, but Cameron reminds him of it later. Continuing on, Cameron plays Fabled Passage, getting himself a copy of Scoot Swarm, and then he'll just pass the turn. Chandler will start his turn off with a Falicut Stone Forge's land for turn, and then moves to combat, swinging for 11 at Logan, who is not a fan, understandably, so he'll tap for three and Chaos Warp it. And so the Mauler is shuffled in, and Chandler crosses his fingers for a Rune Scarred Demon. Unfortunately, the revealed card is Agadim's Awakening. Continuing on, Chandler taps for 4 mana and casts Wildfire Devils. When he enters the battlefield, he rolls, and the chosen player is Matt, who just gives him a Nature's Lore. Chandler will then just pass the turn to Logan, who starts off with a basic forest as land for turn. He'll then tap for 4 to cast a Beast Whisperer, then tap for 4 more to cast Open Walled Oddity, drawing a card. He'll then move to combat and point 11 damage at Cameron. Cameron isn't very excited about this, so he cracks his Fabled Passage for a Snow Island, and this will get him two more Scoot Swarms. He'll then overload a Cyclonic Rift with the help of a Baldur's Gate activation. And so all his opponent's boards are bounced. He also accidentally misrepresents the amount of copies he has, but Chandler returns the favor from earlier and points that out later. Continuing on, Logan recasts his Soul Ring, and then passes the turn to Matt. Matt starts off by recasting his Arcane Signet, then casts a Felwar Stone, losing a life to his Mana Confluence. And finally, he'll tap for 5 to cast Sarkon Unbroken, immediately minusing him to make a 4-4 dragon. The turn is then passed to Cameron, who immediately activates Baldur's Gate for 6 green mana, and then taps for an additional blue to drop AC Tyrant of Gyre Strait, and he'll still have 1 green floating. After this, he'll tap for an additional 2 to cast District Guide, and he'll copy its into the battlefield trigger with Strionic Resonator. He searches for and plays a Gond Gate and a Sea Gate, and when he plays them both, he draws 2 cards and his Scoot Swarm count goes up to 16. He'll then move to combat and swing the three copies of Scoot Swarm that can attack this turn at Sarkon. Matt will block one and then Sarkon dies. The turn is then passed to Chandler. He, Logan, and Matt are getting real worried about these Scoot Swarms, and the only thing Chandler can do about it is to redrop Wildfire Devils and pray the dice pick Logan. A one or two means the pick is Logan, and the result is a one. Logan immediately exiles his chain reaction and Chandler gladly casts it, wiping the board of all creatures. The turn is then passed to Logan, 
who recasts his Beast Whisperer, and then casts an Elder Gargaroth drawing a card. He'll then pass the turn to Matt, who starts off by tapping for 8 mana to recast his commander. He'll then cast a 3 visits, declaring he's going to search for a tapped stomping ground, and passes while searching. Now on Cameron's turn, he starts off with a basic swamp. He'll then activate Baldur's Gate, floating 8 green mana, and then he'll drop an Hour of Promise. The two cards Cameron tutors up and puts onto the battlefield are Maze's End and Field of the Dead, both of which are scary, but Cameron only needs one more gate on the battlefield for Maze's End to win him the game. And seeing as he went and got Field of the Dead as a second land, it means he probably already has a way to find it in hand. This also causes the field to trigger twice, and Cameron copies it with his Resonator. He'll then cast his commander, Nine Finger Keen, and then enchants it with an Aqueous Form. With him now presenting a potential win, Cameron will pass the turn. The turn is now Chandler's, and he has a pretty interesting draw, and he decides to make a pretty fun play. He'll cast Phyrexian Altar, hold Priority, and Tybalt Trickery it. He has to mill two cards, and his free cast is a Zerio. He'll zero her to make a 1-1 Devil, and then play a tapped Agadim the Undercrypt as land for turn, then pass to Logan. Logan will start his turn off by dropping a Menglehorn, drawing a card off the Beast Whisper, and blowing up Cameron's Resonator. He'll then cast his own three visits, finding a forest to the battlefield, and then recast Ulvenwald Oddity, drawing another card. Logan then moves to combat and wants to swing at Chandler's Zariel, but both Matt and Chandler tell him he really should be swinging everything possible at Cameron, because Cameron could potentially win next turn, and every point of damage could matter. And so Logan decides to change his attacks. He swings Gargaroth and Ulvenwad Oddity at Cameron. He'll draw a card off the Gargaroth, and then Cameron will triple block with his zombies on the Gargaroth, then takes 4 damage. Logan will then pass the turn to Matt, and Matt will start his turn off by dropping a Jeska's Will. He gets to choose both modes and targets Logan for the mana. The cards he exiles are a Forest, Sarkon the Masterless, and Teamer Ascendancy, and then he'll make 6 red mana. This is where Matt's real turn begins. He starts off by tapping for an additional green and blue to cast the Teamer Ascendancy. With 5 left over, he'll use it and tap for one more to cast an Ancient Copper Dragon. When it enters the battlefield, he'll get a token copy of it and then draws 2 cards off the Ascendancy. Matt will then tap for 5 more to cast Sarkon the Masterless. He'll down take the Sarkon to make a 4-4, drawing a card off the Ascendancy, and then turns everything sideways at Cameron. Unfortunately, this is more than enough to kill Cameron. And upon his death, he looks at the top 9 cards of his library, and says he would have found a gate and won the game that turn. So Matt just saved the table there, and that 4 damage from Logan did actually end up mattering. Matt still has 2 d20s to roll, and he rolls a 15 and a 5, netting him 20 total treasures. Now these treasures should enter tapped because of the Manglehorn, but everyone forgets it's there, and Matt has them enter untapped. Luckily though, he only casts a Garrick's Uprising and a Dragon Speaker Shaman, which do not affect this game at all. Matt then passes the turn to Chandler, who starts off with his own Jessica's Will, only choosing the Exiling Mode. The three cards are Wayfarer's Bobble, Blood Gift Demon, and a Prismatic Vista. He'll play the Prismatic Vista as land for turn, and then zero Zariel for another Devil. He'll then move to combat, and swing his 1-1 Devil at Matt, Sarkon will trigger killing it, but Chandler will still point the damage at Matt. And Chandler forgets to remove the token from the table, but he catches it before it ends up mattering. Now in his second main, Chandler will fetch with his Prismatic Vista for a Snow Swamp, and then tap for 5 to cast his Blood Gift Demon. The turn will then be passed to Logan. Logan will pay 7 mana to his Ulvenwald Oddity to transform it, and then recast his Hammer of Perforos. Logan will then move to combat, and knowing that Matt has flyers, and he's going to swing at whoever he wants next turn anyway, we'll swing 11 at Matt, and 3 at Chandler. Sarkon puts 4 damage onto the Oddity and the Beast Whisper, and then Matt puts his Shaman underneath the Beast Whisper to negate 2 damage and kill it. The turn is then passed to Matt, and Matt's top deck is exactly what he needs to win the game, that being an aggravated assault. He lets the rest of the table see it, and with all the mana he has right now, he can make 4 additional combat steps which is more than enough to kill both of his opponents, so Logan and Chandler both just concede the game to save time. Well everyone, there you have it. Matt is today's winner. Congrats man, that was an awesome win. I really enjoyed today's video, it was very back and forth with a lot of interaction in it. Let us know what you thought down in the comments below. And while you're down there, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and check out all our nifty links. Anyways, I know what some of you are here for, the Tiamat giveaway. Well, it's officially over, and a winner has been chosen. We are reaching out via email to the winner, so be sure to check to see if it's you. We're going to be sending that email as soon as this video comes out, and you have 48 hours to respond, or we're going to be choosing someone else. And each new winner has another 48 hours to answer, and so on and so forth. And then we'll officially announce you in next week's video. But anyways, it's time for an outro. Thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you. We hope you enjoy our content and continue to grow along with us. But that's all for today. I hope you all have a smooth day.